friends and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be dyeing a synthetic lace front wig, rainbow. I don't even feel like myself I'm wearing a black t-shirt like some like normal person. So the reason why I've decided to dye this wig rainbow um, is because I want to do a rainbow unicorn inspired Disney bound for Dapper Day. Hold on. What is Dapper Day? Dapper Day is an event that happens at Disneyland and Disney World, Disneyland Paris, on different days throughout the year. It's twice a year, so there's a spring and a fall Dapper Day. And it's basically where everyone dresses up super fancy like you would if you were going to the park in the 1950s. There's also an expo where you can buy like different cute vintage stuff from all the different vendors that they have. And it happens over a weekend at the Disneyland Hotel. And then on Sunday, everyone goes into the parks in their Dapper Day style. It's super fun. These Dapper Day looks can be Disney bounds, but they could also just be fancy styles. So I like to always do a Disney bound as my Dapper Day look, but that's just me. But a lot of people just dress up super fancy. And you know, also when I normally go into the parks, I am wearing a bit of a Dapper Day kind of aesthetic because I like to do something a little bit more 50s anyways. Now that I've explained it, let's continue. Which originally I was so excited. I like had the dress ready. I was gonna dye this wig way in advance and then go to Dapper Day on Sunday. But obviously Dapper Day had to be canceled because we were kind of quarantined here. So um, I was like, well, I guess I won't have to work on that and I'll just save that project for later on in the summer, hopefully when we can do Dapper Day. And then I saw that they were doing a Dapper Day online, but I had nothing ready. So now I have like 48 hours, not even to put this together before online Dapper Day, so I'm going to try to dye this wig. And I don't have exactly what I originally thought I would use, but I do have a bunch of synthetic dyes that I used when I was dyeing um, other clothing items, like polyester and stuff, so I can try to use those, I think. I have all colors of the rainbow except for green, but yellow and blue make green, right? So, um, but I have the wig now. I've got the dress, which I just wanna add a little patch to. And I have this dye, so we're gonna go ahead and try to dye this wig rainbow and then style it in a 1940s way because my original vision was to do Rainbow Unicorn as a 1940s movie star because she's the star of all the dreams inside Riley's head and inside out. So let's get started. <laughs> all right, so here are supplies. Here's my wig. She is very soft and luscious. I love an Amazon wig. I'm gonna do it though. Um, so I'm not gonna cut the lace front yet. I'm gonna try to dye it. Um, I saw that you know you should really be using as light blonde as possible. So it is like an ash blonde. Um, so hopefully that'll be helpful for us. And um, yeah, I hope that it, the color's gonna stick to it. So again, it is synthetic. So I'm using synthetic dyes in theory should work. I just am not entirely sure how we're going to dye it rainbow without putting all of it into a boiling pot at the same time. So we're gonna have to figure that out as we go, I guess. Okay, for dyes, I have my Rit Dye More in the Colors of the Rainbow. So um, I have used this before and I actually really liked it. So it's a dye that they specifically make for synthetic fibers. There have been um, a couple of dresses I've dyed from Amazon that look like they were silk, but we all knew that they were not silk. So um, <laughs> I just went ahead and bought some synthetic dyes just to make sure because I knew there was polyester all up in that. Um, so I have all these colors. Hopefully we'll be able to make a full rainbow on her head. Um, and I don't want it to be too bright. I do kind of want it to be a little bit more soft. Um, so I know that just comes with mixing the right amount of every color. So we're going to give it a whirl. Um, I've got gloves. I've got um, a stick to mix the colors with. I'm not sure if we're going to do it in big bins yet. That's what I've colored um, clothing in before, filling it with hot water using the hot water heater. But um, I'm going to watch a couple of tutorials maybe and see if that helps me at all. Um, but I think we just are going to have to do it piece by piece in kind of smaller containers, maybe like dipping the hair in that, in that color specifically. So this might get a little bit complicated because there's so many colors, but I feel like we can do it. So let's go ahead and jump into this thing. All right, guys, we have a setup here. Um, I cannot stress how much I do not know what I'm doing, but I've got my wig, it's on my wig stand. And then I've got this little wonderful box to hopefully hold all the dye that 
runs down. Um, there is not really a good tutorial, unfortunately, on YouTube for how to make like a multiple colored wig. Um, but one guy I saw was using a cup, like a cup of hot water to do little sections. That's my roommate Liz singing in the background, like Snow White. Um, and uh, so I'm gonna try to do that and we're gonna see what happens. I just don't wanna fill giant bins with dye. Like I would need to do like six different ones and I just don't think that it needs that. I think using a cup like he was doing should work. Um, might get a little bit tricky towards the top. I think we're gonna have to do kind of a bigger container for like the top of the head, but I think that I can make this happen. So let's just try. We got hot water boiling. I've got a mug picked out and we're gonna start at the bottom. Looking at Rainbow Unicorn's hair, it's that green color, which I don't have. So we're gonna have to try to mix the blue and the yellow and hopefully we can get the right shade of green. So let's do it. In order to activate the synthetic dye, you gotta use boiling water. So I'm just gonna take my tea kettle, pour some hot water into the largest mug that I have. And now I'm gonna start to make my green dye. So I'll just use a little bit of yellow, a little bit of blue. I'm just kind of playing it by ear. I add back in a little bit more yellow because I was afraid the blue was a bit overwhelming. And then I'm just gonna take a little paper towel, dip it in, and that's gonna show me what the color is. So it's actually a nice green. So now what I'm doing here is I'm literally just gathering the ends of the hair and I'm dipping it into the mug. So normally it says on the bottle that you should be like putting this in boiling water with the dye for like 30 minutes. Obviously I really don't have time to do that and um, it's just not gonna be humanly possible for me to hold my hand there for that long. But something I found when I was dyeing other fabrics is that you don't really actually need to do it for that long, especially if you're going for a pastel color. So since I'm going for a pastel color with this wig, we're gonna be able to do it real quickly. So next we're adding blue. So I'm just gonna mix that up in my mug real quick each time I'm refilling it, checking it with paper towel to make sure the color is what I want. And now I'm going to take a hairband just to separate these sections because honestly, I want to know where one ends, one begins. I do still want it to be a bit of an ombre from one color to the next, so it kind of helps me know where I want that to start. And then I'm dipping the blue section into the, the pot as well. So um, this is a section of the hair. I'm having to like kind of fold it to make sure I don't accidentally get more than I meant to. Purple dye. We're going to do the same thing here, take another rubber band. And I thought that I was pretty smart and this was gonna work, but very quickly it became clear that I wasn't able to get as much of the hair as I actually wanted into the cup. Um, just angle-wise, it wasn't gonna happen. So I had to think of a plan B. So I went ahead and I took the wig off the stand and I used my giant bin here. And I just tried to kind of maneuver it a bit more so I could get more of the hair into the cup. Eventually I realized I had to take off the rubber bands because it just was making it too difficult to get all of that hair because it was this hair that starts to go into like the scalp of the wig. So I had to take those out and then really get in there dipping it by hand. And this is where it started to get very messy and very dicey. I was trying really hard not to get any of the ends of the hair accidentally purple. Okay, so I've got purple, I've got the blue. Oh, don't you dare fall over. And I've got the green. Um, so now all we gotta do is pink and the red. So I might need to switch to a bigger pot for the top of the head. So for my pink dye, instead of using the little mug, I decided to go with a bigger pot. That way, I just had more surface area to try and dip the wig in. So I'm first trying to keep half of the wig in a different bin. I was thinking that maybe it would help prevent some of the color spillage. Um, that wasn't really working at a certain point and I was having a bit of a difficult time with this pink um, I didn't feel like it was really staying in the wig and I was having a hard time getting uh, The full you know head completely covered with it the method that I was currently using Okay, so this is where we're currently at. I, I feel like the blue is really just the silver now um, And it was really hard to try and get this pink on here I'm gonna try to add the red at the top. I don't know if it's gonna look like how I want. I'm like, maybe should I just be completely pink on top? No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try the red and then I'm gonna try to add back in some more blue and purple. In hindsight, I don't know why I started with the bottom. I should have just started with the top. I guess. So um, let's try to do just the top of it first. It's gonna be the hardest thing. And then correct some of the colors, bringing it a little bit more vibrant, but try to keep that kind of pastel 
cute. I think that you can't get rid of because it's an ash blonde wig. So here we go. We're diving back in. Let's just go all pink up top first. And then if we need to, we can add some red. So it was my second attempt at the pink when I realized that I pretty much just had to fully submerge the top of the wig. And you know, this is what I had seen in the other tutorials that I have watched, but I didn't think was possible because I was trying to do such a, you know, rainbow ombre effect. Um, and so I did end up accidentally dyeing, you know, the entire lace front bright pink. But at that point, I was just honestly like, this wig has got to be pink and we got to make it happen. So that's what happened. And so then it's just me brushing it out. I finally, finally, finally got the pink that I wanted. Also in between these different colors, I'm actually taking it and rinsing it out with cold water in the sink to help the color stay. And I repeated the process just to what I was doing before with some of the other colors with the purple, the blue, and it ended up looking like this. And honestly, I was pretty dang happy with these final results. All right, the dyeing process is complete. So this is a finished wig. I wanted to show you guys it outside in the sunlight, but it's been like the gloomiest day of all time. Um, and I was quite busy, so this is the best I can do. But you can see we got the pastel green into blue, a little bit of purple into the pink. And honestly, I think it actually turned out really pretty. Um, definitely going with the ash blonde wig helped it have that really like light pastel-y hue, which is what I was going for. So I'm glad that we were able to do it. And I'm glad that the green doesn't look like swamp green. Like I was a little bit afraid that it was going to um, about the midpoint of dyeing this. Um, I definitely learned a lot about wig dyeing, I would say, and I think it would be a lot easier if I was just dyeing it one color as opposed to trying to do a whole gosh darn rainbow. So now, um, yep, go over here. Wig. All right, so let's go ahead and try to curl this wig. Um, I did watch a video of the process, and it's the guy that I watched a couple of his like wig videos. He's really good. He has lots of subscribers, so I'll link him down below. Um, but definitely go ahead and give his video a watch because it was very helpful and informative. And hopefully, hopefully I can do what he did. So my main issue I think we're gonna have is that the rollers I have, I only have like a couple um, of these like kind of plastic types. And the, but then I do have my other rollers I just use in my hair normally, my foam rollers. So I'm hoping that. It could be okay to use the foam rollers and I do have another type of rollers too just like the long bendy ones so I'm gonna try I'm just gonna try and um, we're gonna need our steamer so I'll get the steamer rolling and let's just let's just go for it okay let's do this so these are the curlers I have from Amazon I have these longer ones that wrap around itself and then I also have my foam rollers which I usually use to curl my hair so I'm gonna go ahead and use those so the first thing I'm just going to do is go ahead and part the hair. So I do want a bit of a side part to give us more the way I kind of normally part my hair when I'm doing more of this like vintage hairstyle, especially for 40s. We want to try to like have a bit of a bang. And then I'm just going to go through the hair and piece by piece, making sure it's completely brushed out. Because I know you're not supposed to have any sort of kink in it, otherwise you're definitely going to see that. And I'm going to start with the front of my head here. So I'm doing all these pieces going down and then I'll start kind of moving towards the back and I'm also going to start sectioning hairs with clips just to make sure I can get all these ones down at the bottom, get the bigger pieces towards the top. Eventually I did have to actually switch and go with the longer ones because I just ran out of my foam curlers. There is so much hair on this wig which I'm pretty shocked because I thought I had a lot of hair. Turns out nothing compared to the amount of hair on <laughs> this wig here. All right, gang, so this is Foley and Curlers. Boy, we're gonna see if it, it works. I had to do the two different types because I just did not have enough of one. Um, so let's go ahead, grab the steamer, and we're gonna grab a plastic bag to try and set these curls in this hair. Okay, so I went to set up the steamer, plugged it in, I was like, oh, it's not steaming. Turns out there's a hole in the bottom of the steamer. So we're gonna have to plan B and we're gonna go to the stove and we're gonna make some steam by boiling some water and hold the wig on top. And we're just gonna hope that that works. Okay. Oh gosh. Okay, let's go ahead and boil some water here. Okay, I think we have a good amount of steam, so let's just dive in, shall we? So I'm just gonna kind of shift different sections to be 
more in the steam and hopefully I've done it for long enough. I spent about 30 minutes, I think, doing this and just trying to make sure that the curls feel both heated and um, wet by the time that you're done. It's moments like these when I start to wonder if I am a crazy person. <laughs> Folding a wig over a pot of boiling water. All right, so I feel like this is pretty good. It does feel hot and vaguely damp. Hopefully it's not because I've been holding this here for quite quite a while, probably about 30 minutes now. So I think that we're going to call it, leave it to sit overnight, and then we'll try style it in the morning. So let's hope that this turns out good. Hello everyone and welcome to the next morning. It is 9 a.m. We are going to see how these curls turned out, style this wig, and then quickly take a picture because Dapper Day be happening. And here I am with my cup of coffee. Yes, we did it over a gosh darn stove, baby. <laughs> this is awesome, you guys. Okay, let's take all these bad boys out. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, I got two different brushes. I'm gonna try this one first with my magical wig brush. So I'm just gonna take my brush and brush out the curls to get those nice 1940s waves. Ooh, look at that. That turned out gorgeous on that side. That just looks like butter. I'm probably not gonna have to do too much shaping with this. I like the way that the curls are coming out naturally. And I'm just gonna make sure that it's nice and smooth on top. So since I don't wanna look like a drag queen, Surprisingly, I'm gonna to try to not overstyle this, but I am going to tuck the keys to bang just a little bit um, and then maybe give it a spritz and a spray. I'm just putting a little tippy here to kind of create a bit more of a swoop. So I'm using Got To Be Glued. I'm just spraying the wig down so that it holds its shape, but I don't wanna to use too much of this because I don't want it to become crunchy at all. That's pretty good. Let's go ahead. We're gonna trim our lace front, which is hot pink, which is maybe the worst thing that happened out of this. Um, and then I'm gonna start putting together the look. So I'm just using a small pair of scissors to do this um, for hair, and I'm just trying to get as close to the hairline as possible. We're just gonna have to do our best to hide the lace with the rest of the wig. Defeats the entire purpose of a lace front when you accidentally dyed a lace pink, but you know, it's okay. You live and you learn. Next time, we won't do that. <laughs> Alright, I'm happy with how this is looking. The spray down is looking gorgeous. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna get the dress on. I'm gonna make a little sparkly heart to put on my hips. I'm gonna style my makeup and then we're gonna see what's gonna happen. And we're gonna see the finished product on. Alright, so I'm gonna show you guys the dress that I bought on Amazon for this look. I had planned for a long, long time. I love that it has like a little scoop neck and it's long and beautiful and shiny white. It's very hard to find like that kind of satiny white dress without it being a million dollars. This was 40 bucks, um, but I do think it was worth it and I'm gonna be able to use it for a lot of different things. So to make her a little heart applique on her hip, originally I was gonna like embroider something, but then I thought, you know, I'd really like to be able to use this for other um, bounds and costumes, so I'm actually just gonna use sparkly sticky thumb, which has become like my new best friend for like changing outfits without having to like sew something on there. So we're gonna put a big sparkly pink heart on her hip, and then I was thinking to go with this something kind of fabulous and furry, so maybe like my faux fur little shrug. So let's grab that. 
since she is a unicorn after all, I feel like these two together is perfect. We do need some teals to go with it as well. So probably something just super sparkly. The color scheme is basically just white and rainbow. Um, so we could pull from any of those colors, but I think just doing like a pretty sparkly one because we are still going with that 1940s film actress vibe um, is gonna be best. So let's see if we can find something a little bit more bedazzled. So even though they're a little bit more like nude, golden, I do think I wanna go with these. Um, because they do just kind of stay more like new star to me than some of the other shoes to fully bedazzle. I think it's just like Goodwill. Love them. Wear them a lot when I'm Elsa. Um, so I think I'm going to go with these bad boys. And so let's just put together, I'm thinking a little headband. I do have a unicorn horn that's like not currently attached to anything. It is silver though. So I might want to change the colors of that depending because her horn is pink and purple. And then I want to put the heart on the side, do my makeup, and get into this costume. Well, I have this pre-existing unicorn horn just lying around. Don't ask me why. Um, but what I'm going to do is take some of the foam that I'm going to be using to make the heart. So here I'm just going to trace the heart, cut it out, and be able to stick it right onto the dress. Super easy peasy. Honestly, sticky foam is the way to go with these things. And then the rest of the sticky foam I'm going to take and I'm just going to wrap it around the horn. Um, kind of where these sequins are because she has a pink and purple horn. I kind of thought about putting the purple fabric on here too, but it was just too complicated. And this is a quick and easy way to make a cute little unicorn horn. To do our makeup, just gonna wipe my face off real quick with one of these pads, and then I'm gonna put on my moisturizer, Imperialis from Lush, my favorite. And then I'm gonna very quickly do my hair into two French braids, which is my favorite thing to do when putting on a wig, if I have the time. So I'm just gonna style that real quick. All good to go. Super cute. And when you take these out, your hair actually looks super cute too. So I'm just gonna put on some of my foundation really quick. We'll be doing a light pink blush, nothing too bright. And then in some designs, it looks like she has a bit of purple eyeshadow and that feels pretty unicorny to me. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do purple eyeshadow here. Just a little bit of more of a lilac in the center of the eye and then a little bit of a darker purple in the crease. Put on some fake lashes. Now for lips, I'm gonna go with this kind of bright pink color. Normally I do a red lip for 1940s, but since, you know, she is a unicorn, makes sense to do pink. And then with my glitter palette here, I'm just gonna add a little bit of purple glitter to my eyes just to make it ever so extra sparkly and magical. Then I'll take my hair, put her on up into my wig cap, and we are ready to see our final look. And that is the finished look. So I'm very happy with how this went. I'm honestly a little bit shocked that it was so successful that I was able to do this. I did not know I could do something like this in like less than 48 hours. So hats off to me. Um, and yeah, I cannot wait to get to wear this to the parks. I'm really sad that we're not at Pixar Pier today, so my friend Kate hasn't come down and we're there and it's just wonderful and we're seeing all the wonderful people and their wonderful outfits. It's just my favorite thing ever. So I look forward to the day in which we can have Dapper Day at Disneyland again. And I hope, I hope it's like sometime this summer. I know it probably won't be, but I'm still gonna hold on to that hope because this is the outfit that you gotta wear out. You just can't wear it in front of the house for the neighbors, so. <laughs> But that's all for this video, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you're interested in seeing wig tutorials like this one. Although I don't know if I'd really call it a tutorial because it's more like, let's try to figure this out and everything goes wrong um, type of video. So, <laughs> but let me know if you want to see more wig transformations. There we go. Because I do have some other wigs that I'd like to style, certainly princess wigs. And this is the first wig I ever styled. So, so far, so good. Let's see if we can learn about about more things and make them even better in the future. So <laughs> I will see you guys in my next video, but until then, stay sparkly. Bye-bye.